whoa, I can't believe what I stepped into the barbershop today, what I stepped into. So it just got me so amped. It took me off of, it put me back on schedule. I want to say it took me off my schedule, but it put me back on the podcast schedule because it reminded me why I started to do the podcast to begin with. Yo, every time I get with Pop, it's always eventful and it just sparks up some great conversation. And this is one of these moments that it doesn't matter. There's no rules to this podcast shit. So it was an interesting conversation. I said, as soon as I get back, I'm putting it up. Here it is. But I'm gonna break it down to you real quick. Uh, I've been I've been in business for 25 years. I'm working by myself for the last 15 years. You have a general idea of what, what the fuck we do, how I do, and what he does, because he's a musician himself. So one minute, let me finish cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, but you know what happened is that once I started doing the shows with all these guys, that is when I started to realize like, yo, this is a whole bunch of regular ass. Yeah, that's so cool. And it's like fame is pleasing because you use the fame to make money. Make money. Exactly. Yeah. So, so your popularity and your fame allows you to make more money. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then it's like, and it's fleeting. It's always fleeting because you always got to do something. You always got to keep doing like something people. and triggering and triggering. Yo, when I was working at the studio, so young kids would come in and be like, yo, how's this? How's that? I'm like, yo, these are uh, regular people. They're regular yeah. humans like you are. Yeah, man. Trying to do all of a sudden. Trying to just. It just runs. They're trying to get by like that. But the first EP yes. was at every single every yeah. single event yeah. and yeah, I'm a, I'm a let out. Yeah. Yo, I remember doing the show when I did the thing with Wu Tang, right? And then I went to the back of the bus with uh with Method Man. Yeah. And I'm like Oh, what are you about you know, to get into? Blah, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're thinking that you're going to party. He's like, I'm going to my wife. I'm going to stand out. I'm going to stand out and show my wife. Yeah, like, damn, it put everything into perspective. All it is is like, you know, you got to think about it. Like, you got to think about it. 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 Like the viewer wants to see more, yeah. and then they start putting the, they paint a picture. They paint, they paint their own picture. Yes, they do. That's all you do is like, so if you out there traveling, hustling, bustling, they're painting that picture like you're really doing it. Because ideally, that's what they want to do. But the, rea- the the realization of it is, yo, you're doing it because you're getting paid to be there and do it. But there's people out there that are willing to do it. For the hype, yeah, and then waste all their bread. Well, that's why they, they and they're paying to do shows. Yeah. That's why they're paying to do shows. And, then, yeah. and, and then, marketing is and stupid. They stand beside somebody, like yo, can I take a picture with you? Yo, we about to do work. Yeah, like the, the reality of it is not. Like I tell you this, I went to the barber shop the other day and I met some dude, and he was telling me like, yo, uh, I, you have a clothing company. I said, yeah. He goes, do, you, do celebrities wear it? I said, you know what? I don't really, I don't know who buys my stuff. Because it's online, and every time I wake up, I gotta mail shit out. I don't really know. Am I supposed to know? I don't think I'm supposed to know. Do I want celebrities to wear it? I mean, it ain't Gucci, Givenchy, it ain't Nike. So if I do get a celebrity to wear it, and he really does purchase it, I'm I'm happy for that. But again, look at and then but he's giving like it's almost like the fame part. It's like. They've given you some light on it, and it should be able to help you sell yeah, but these, a lot of these, like, oh, celebrities yeah, but, but the, so the dude was telling me he gives out a lot of free clothes to celebrities, so celebrities will buy it. I said, the shit isn't, no, no one's going to want to buy that. Like, because I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I don't want to buy that. Even if you gave it to me for free. What they're going to do with this item is, they're going to take it and give it to their boy. Right, right, right. Like, there's a lot of companies on social media that send me free shit all the time. I post it on IG all the time. I get free glasses, free t-shirts. Y'all, y'all know I only wear J. Crew, Polo, Huckberry, and LLB. Like if they're not giving me discounts or free gear, shout out to Levi's because y'all took care of the kids. But if y'all not giving me free gear, uh, the, the stuff I'm gonna wear, I'm not really gonna wear it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give it to somebody that's gonna need it, but I ain't gonna wear it. If you think about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, shit, I'm really picky about the clothing I wear. Call me crazy. I'm picky about the person who cuts my hair, like you are. I'm not gonna go sit in anybody's chair. Bro, there's like five barbershops up the block. I'd rather drive past any one of these barbershops and go to Jersey City and get my shit cut by my man because I would not allow them to cut my hair. Mm-hmm. No offense to nobody because I fuck with some of the dudes that cut hair in there. But me personally, there's a certain style of finesse that I'm looking for with somebody right, to right. cut my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of the times, most of these dudes ain't even licensed. My, my girl went and got her nails done the other day, right? Her yeah. toes done, right? And she was like, I think in Shore Hills or somewhere like that. State board runs in there. Short Hills. Short Hills. And then all the Mexicans and the little Korean people run the fuck out. What happens then? You at this motherfucking, you, you getting your nails done at a high-end nail salon and ain't nobody in the license. Man, you do the math on that. You know what I'm saying? 
But I go to my boy's barbershop, Marty Mar, over there in Jersey City, and every one of the stations got a license in it. Every they all are licensed. You, most of the time you go to other shops, ain't nobody licensed. Buy one a state board running the shop, and I'm talking about to get my shit cut. And if the state board running and they're gonna got no license, what's gonna happen? He gotta leave. The whole day is shot. <laughs> he gotta leave. So why I'm gonna deal with somebody like that? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So like I know personally the business. Right. Hence the reason why I got a great establishment. Now, why hasn't anybody come to work here yet? Think about it. Because 95% of the niggas out here that are claiming to be barbers ain't even licensed. And then when you pull their card, you're like, yo, let me get you to see a license. Well, uh, what happened was, I said, you got to have the little, the to, the, to, the to go license. He's like, oh, yeah, but um, I'll get back to you on that. Nah, like in order to get hired, I got to send that over to the state. I'll mm -hmm. let them know that you're working here and that we be paying taxes on your shit. Right. It is what it is. And yes, you're going to be getting 60, 40, 60 to you, 40 to me, and you can commission on everything that sells. It's a great wow, fucking deal. that's a good deal. It's a yeah. great fucking deal. Wow, okay. if, if, if people would have asked me, what's what's the deal in the barbershop? 60, 40 you. Wow. That's amazing. And a commission on any item you sell. And that's not that's not even like a typical barber type move. No. And they usually do 50, 50 or put you on some like bogus ass, bogus ass rent or something like that and... You come and go as you please. Yeah, I heard about that before. Renting yeah, renting a chair that. literally on the wall says is illegal. But we're about to get into this uh, podcast real quick. So, um, okay, introduce it. You got to introduce what you want to talk about so I don't have to do the intro. All right, so, um, <laughs> all right, let me, let me, let me set you up. Let me set you up. All right. Yeah. All right, okay. What is it? What is it? Uh, all right. With uni? Life, life, life. This is life with uni. Visa. This is life with uni. Yes. All right. And this, this is his real fucking name, too. Like, proved they pulled out his driver's license. <laughs> Bugged me the fuck out and was like, yeah, my name is Uni B. So I said, I don't fucking believe you. He said, yes, it is. And I said, holy shit, I fucking believe you now. So right. proof is in the pudding. I've seen it. It's on his driver's license. It is what it is. Yeah, so what's the name? And then I've been, uh, so we're going to just put this straight up on the podcast today. I yeah. only, I've been slowing down and doing it like bi-monthly because I got, you know, the release of the music and stuff like that. All right. So, so I've been having a, a discussion with uh, two of my buddies in the group chat. Okay. Right. Uh, one dude took his shit, grabbed everything, dipped off, opened up a business, is doing really well. Okay. And I respect that. You gotta love the fact that somebody's out there chasing the entrepreneurship. Um, I love it. I, I watch his page. I try to give him as much advice as possible. And um, you know, it is what it is. And I have another dude that uh, that you know works. Uh, he has a job. We don't know what he does, but he has a job. Good guy. Love him to death. He's one of my clients. Personal good friend of mine. We're both in the fashion, you know, we do a lot of cool things together. Okay. Um, so they, uh, the one kid says something about uh, being rich and finance after I posted something on social media about the most expensive thing to do in this world is what? Pay for living. Right, the cost of living. The cost of living is the most expensive thing in the world, right? So I look at it as if you're... 25 years old, right? And you're purchasing a house at 25 with a 30 year finance, right? And you're doing bi-weekly on it, you get it done in 20 years, you're practically gonna be well off by the time you're 45 years old, correct? Right, if you keep the... If you keep your payments on the bi-weekly, the whole nine, right. a good rate, no, re no refinance, no whole nine. Right. So, and you don't, re you don't go backwards with it. So, to me, what's your definition of rich? I'm asking you. My definition of rich. Yeah, what's your definition of, of, of being a rich a rich person? Like I'm you're rich. I want to know your definition before I get into uh showing my ass. Man, I don't even I I you know what? Is rich to you a finance or is rich to you a feeling? Is rich to say, you I, I wouldn't say it's a feeling. It ain't really a because I, I look at more financing on the wealthy side. On the wealthy like side. Building you know, building wealth is even more on the finance side. Being rich, you, you could be rich in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? Rich in knowledge. You could be rich in just personality. There's a lot of things. So I wouldn't even equate that to money. To money at yeah, all? Yeah, nah, nah. All right. I mean, think about it. The thing about desserts, and they got a rich taste. It's just like, you know, there's, it's rich. It's just a lot of it. So my whole thing was this. I said, listen, when um, I got three years left on my loan, and I am 38 years old. So by the time I'm 41 years old, right, financially, right, I'll be I I will be in a better place where I I can work on my wealth. That's what I yeah. Right. You're, you're, so so well, you're, you're already doing that. You're building wealth. I, I, for you to be able to pay off something and to be at forty one, yeah, that's actually building wealth. Yeah. Well, the wealth is built. Yeah, you're building. It. Yeah. yeah. So wealth to me is that uh, my kid's kid is yes. going to be well off. Yeah. Right? Now I can agree. being rich, 
That's Everybody's fucking rich when you come to sit and think about it. But I look at it as income to debt ratio. Yes. So having income to debt ratio, if you have zero bills, right? right? right. Now we're going to talk rich on the finances side. Okay. All right. So if you have zero bills, right? Low overhead, right? And you have a consistent cash flow. Okay. And you have no cost of living. You are rich and creating wealth. Okay. Okay. Now, if okay. you have... If you have a brand new business, new children, new car, new house, the debt to income ratio means you're 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 living rich. <laughs> you're, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're living rich. Yeah, you're not you don't yeah, you're, you're, you're not you're there. Yeah, you don't necessarily have riches, you know. You don't have money. the financial yeah. thought of riches, but you yeah. are like you got to somehow like you got how many kids? 3. 3 kids. Now, you know if you had one child, right? How much more would you have financially? Yes. How, no, I'm asking. Uh, a lot more. All right, so if they say, yo, it costs a million dollars to have one child. That's what, that's what they, they accumulated it to be. A million. But it's more now because things went up. Right. Now we're talking about if you have two to three children. So in your lifetime, if you have three children, you should have well over $3 million. Do the math on that. Okay. Makes sense, right? Okay. So would that make you rich or wealthy? Well, shit. That means I'm taking care of my kids until they're... <laughs> no, 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 no. We're only talking until 20, 18 years old. That's what they're talking. They're talking the ratio of it. The wow. ratio of it. Wow, okay. The ratio of it, right? Okay. So what I was trying to explain to my friend that was on the telephone with me, you know, sending the mass texts, I was trying to explain to him that, like, if you want to speak financial rich, right, let's break it down. All right. I have zero debt, right? I have low overhead, That's nice. right? Uh... I have uh, income coming in, right? Three years and my house is paid off, mm -hmm. and I have zero. Like it's, it's. Does that make me rich? I mean, you can consider yourself rich, but see, the, the reason. But I don't never like to talk so, money. So, so, and this is, and this is why I said this is like when you say rich, it's like it rich it's, can it's, be so many. It's, it's, but, yeah, it's relative my, to the person. It's relative to the person because because my, somebody my, look at you. Hold yeah. on a second. Somebody look at you. I'm like, motherfucker, you ain't rich. I got a hundred million dollars in the bank. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they said the, the lotto is 1.6 and then Yeah, I wouldn't even want that million. money. I wouldn't even but, want but it. you said they said the cash out at 900 million. So then you're not, you know, no. you can be rich in your own That's time. what I'm trying Somebody to say. Somebody making $30,000 a year and then, you know, and has everything lined up and, and they're, they're not winning from, so that's just like, it's, very it's different type of but rich. When you're talking about, like, when you're talking about building wealth, and that, that's something. That's what I was trying to. you're living beyond your means, you're not building not wealth. Living, yeah, not, you're, you're not. Yes. You know, so you're like, living rich. You're living rich. Because you have the jewels on. The whole nine popping. Yeah, I don't care about that shit. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because yeah, if you're driving around in a seven series and you're eating it, you know what I'm saying? You're, eating you're physically accepting everything that's coming to you with that. And you got to pay that. For the look. For the look. We don't do nothing for the look here. Nah. So I, I always said 25 years of experience, 14 years in business, right? I'm very knowledgeable rich. Very knowledgeable rich. In knowledge. Rich, rich in knowledge. knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't care for finance. I don't like to talk about finance. Now, my landlord is definitely rich. Shout out to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely rich, dude. Definitely wealthy. <laughs> that motherfucker has got money. Right, because he's yeah. getting paid in his sleep. Yeah, he yeah. sleeps. So um, I just, you know, I come from a family where um, my father hustled. My mom, she was in law enforcement, retiring next week. Wow. And, um, like, we not the first generation dudes here. Like, we, my family's been here to be here to been here. My grandmother's in Mandeville, and my, my father's side is, uh, is Andino. And then we got a Mercado from the Puerto Rican side also. Like, we've been here, man. Like, we not really no immigrants. We, we Americans, bro. So when you're speaking to people that are, like, first and second generations here, and their families came from nothing, and they got a little something, you can't let that little bit of something like outweigh somebody that's been in the U.S. The whole, their whole lives and they, they've been getting it their whole lives. So I try to tell people, never compare and contrast. Because when you meet somebody that's working harder than you and you just now getting it, the man's been working harder than you for years. What do you think he did with that? You think, you think, do you think the man invested in and just got rid of it? It's kind of like you see somebody that's in good shape, mm -hmm. right? You see somebody in good shape. And you be like, man, that nigga is on steroids. You think it's come overnight? It, nothing, nothing of wealth comes overnight. Nothing of richness that you want to keep comes overnight. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's kind of like, why are you sitting here comparing your life to somebody else's life? Well, anyways, what is yeah? What is the point of doing that? That's anyway? what I didn't understand. Because you're not, you don't even know what. The I, I wake up in the morning every morning. I'm in a group chat, right? Okay. With this group chat, I say, hey guys, God, uh, God bless. Good morning. 
I hope everybody has a blessed and wonderful day. The same thing I say on social media, to uplift and push people forward. I'm not a dickhead. I'm a cool ass dude. And you know this because you yeah. fuck with me yeah. damn near weekly. Yeah. So after all said and done, it's kind of like, why are you questioning my pockets? Like I went online and now he, you know, the dudes in the group chat was like, you're not booked every day. And I'm like, I don't got to be booked every day right. to be good to go. It's like the book, Pumpkin Plan. My man just got finished telling me, he gave me a whole synopsis on it, right? Pumpkin plan is this. A pumpkin seed costs like $2,000, $3,000 if you want to make one of them big ass pumpkins, right? So if you got to make one of them big ass pumpkins, right? You, you're spending $2,000 on a seed, right? The object is to like sift through the seeds that ain't going to bring you no bread to buy the actual seed that's going to give you the biggest pumpkin because you're in a contest of creating world's largest pumpkin. Right. So as you create a business, you're going to get a lot of people out there that are going to knock your business, say this, say that, say this, say that, may not like the change in your business. But what you do is you eliminate them, right? And keep the good pumpkins, the strong quality seeds, and your business grows in the long term. And then you don't have to be looking busy. Like, I think that people get that shit fucked up. Where it's like, oh, well, I'm busy, so I got, I'm productive. Just no. because the person is, you don't have to be constantly. You don't have to be constantly doing yeah. something to be to be known as being busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long yeah. as it's happening. To be getting shit done. Yeah, and we went through this. Yes, yes. Because yes. I told you, slow the fuck down. You're doing too much. Yeah, and you know. And you're going to be working for, on something more productive. And that's the thing. And it's going to get a lot more done. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, too, because, and, you know, I say this a lot to people, too. It's like your time is, is priceless. And right? you cannot get that back. So it's like, okay. Say you do five dollar haircuts and you're busy all day long. Five dollars, but your time. Look at what you got and five dollars, and you're doing five dollar haircuts and it's like yo. You're 20. cutting twenty five people in a day at five dollars a haircut. Yeah. Right. So twenty five people in a day at five dollars a haircut is nothing. So then and then say now say you got, you know I got three four clients and they five, both they and both giving you fifty to one hundred dollars fifty to one hundred dollars a piece. Right. And it's like when well, then you sit down and you're like, hey, I'm going to go out to eat with my lady. I'm going to go and do this. I'm going to visit my dad. Hey, you know what? I'm going to sit down and just... Uh, Watch some TV. Your time is priceless. Your time is priceless. <laughs> that's what know, it, yeah. It's all about so that's working it. productive, yeah. then working non-productive and overworking yourself to the point where you're, you're running circles. So, so I can see like that, that pumpkin thing that you're talking about, and then you're going out to get the bigger seats because there's buyers for that. It, yeah. So if somebody's going to pay $2,000 for the big seat, why would you sit... I mean, you could. Don't worry. You can nickel and dime it. Or just move some weight. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And like, yo, be done with it. Be Why, done with it. You know, unless that's what you want to be. If you want to be known for it, like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. If you want to be that dude that cuts 18 to 25 people a day, 25 to 30 people a day. But you know what? I can also see in the beginning. If you're starting something, I can see. You got to go. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. But see, that's a 25, 25 years, years of experience. experience. You're slowing it down. You're slowing it down. And I can compare it to something else. I can compare it to playing basketball because I, I remember being, you know, a young dude on the court playing basketball and dudes that had handled, they would do a whole bunch of extra shit, but never bring never, it to the basket. Never bring right? it to the basket. And then you get an older guy come there and they're like, get out the, the court old head. And the guy does the basic, the basic mental, crossover. And then, yeah. And then back up. Back and shoot. up. And shoot and you're not working too hard because. And, but he knows, and for some reason, how does always, he know that? He knows that because experience. of experience. Yeah, yeah. So, so when it comes thing. down to this, when you open up a business, guys, if you open up a business, guys, all right, I'm, I'm gonna keep it one. Oh, oh, my fault, my fault. I'm looking at the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you open up a business, guys, right, and um, you you just starting up your business, I saluted and shouted my man out and told him, yo, I'm happy you raised your prices because you were selling a lot. You were selling a lot in a product, and all the other companies around you weren't really selling the same quality of product. And this guy is in love with his product. And I respect him for knowing the knowledge of his product, but he questions everything. Okay. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with the question it because you're a young entrepreneur. You, you're just getting this off the, off the floor. You invested all your money into a business. And I try to tell him like, yes, you're doing great. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. I'm not sitting here trying to tell somebody, yo, I don't think you should raise your prices because of the fact that uh, your shit sucks. I never, ever said, I never even had the product and I market it all the time. I love the kid. The kid's a good friend of mine. I looked at him as a good guy. But when they're sitting there and he was ridiculing, they, they, posted, a, uh, they posted a thing on, my, <clears throat> on the group chat. Okay. And the group chat, it was a, a regular thing. And it said, the most common question is, are you gay? And I said, no, I'm not gay. I said, is it because of the fact that I dress well? Um, I treat people with respect and uh, I understand women and I dress the way I dress. Does that make me gay? 
No, it doesn't make me gay. Okay. So you ask yourself, gay isn't a religion, it isn't a, a, a race, it isn't, it isn't nothing. What is preference? It's a preference. It's all it is. Like, does that can, can I be mad at that? No, I love everybody the same. Why well, throw that in the group chat, right? And it'd be like, oh, if they're buying the stuff off you, you're good to go. I'm like, it don't matter. I don't care who's buying. I don't care if a celebrity's buying. I don't care if a fucking celebrity sits in my chair. I don't care if so, so, a lesbian. Uh, uh, let Does that try. really make a difference? So I, I'm trying to get understand. So you're trying to insinuate the reason for your success is because you must be gay. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So I asked him that, right? It, okay. So I asked him. I said, so wh why did you why did you put that out there? Like, what is that about? He was like, uh, well, he the guy who put it out there said nothing. Right, right, okay. But the other guy kept digging in it. P posted a video of uh, the Marlon Wayne's brother sipping a drink and saying like like you know how he'd be like like oh with another big dude and was like oh this is Popeye at the gym and they started making jokes and I'm like yo you guys are targeting uh making jokes about something that my mom is a lesbian bro I don't tolerate anybody talking any bad thing about anybody gay or anybody uh that's uh like that has bad health needs and that missing limbs that shit is rude and disrespectful right, right. straight up rude you can't don't sit there and demolish somebody because of the fact that they, what they like and what they love. Don't do that, man. That's whack. Right. That is this 2019, 2018, 2019. Everybody's fucking loved. Like, the don't fuck out of here. Better than do <laughs> and, then, and, and, then, and then the motherfucker would be like, <laughs> yeah. and then he sat there and was like, oh, uh, I'm like, yo, you guys got a lot of fucking nerve. Mm. Like, you got a lot of, my, you're, you're touching shit that's pissing me off because my mom, I'm protecting my mom. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I can't have nobody. I got great customers that are come in here. You know what I'm saying? Don't sit here and try to play me the fuck But you know, out. you know, my thing is, is that it's not really something to um, I want to say to get emotional about. It's more of like it's you ignorant. Know, yeah, yeah, it is ignorant. It's ignorant. And then it's more like, all right, well, get to the root of what because really what it sounds like when I'm listening, um, and I'm from the outside and then I'm listening. It's like it's like, oh man, you're uh, like you didn't have nothing else to attack, so you're trying. You can't find any chink in you the armor. You can't find no chink in the armor. So, so then it's like, well, let's go for this. But it, like, it, then like, we it, talked. Uh, we talked about finance and all this other stuff. And then I was trying to explain to him like, debt to income ratio makes you well off. Right. That's it. There's nothing else. If if ends yeah. about about yeah, yeah, because you can have ten million dollars in old twenty, and you, you got ten million dollars in old twenty million dollars, and you yeah. broke. Yes. Yep, and then you yep. drive in a brand new car and you look like you you you, you look, look like you look rich. You look rich man. <laughs> so my girl knows, my yep, girl knows, right. my girl knows when she first started dating me, right? I worked with the finance. Okay. My girl's cousins all know, Marky, John John, rest in peace. They all know I work with them with their finance because I come from a family that's really smart with money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we weren't taught, like we weren't taught to be stupid with the income you make. We were taught to like every penny must count. Right. You know what I mean? We're not the first generation, second generation. We've been here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that is, I mean, you've no, been but, here, but the, but the way the kid was making it seem, okay, the kid was making it seem like, oh, uh, we're we're better or we're doing good considering that we were the first and second generations here. I'm like, no, you are what you put in in life. That's it. That's it. You, you are what you put in in life. That is it. If you're going to go hard in life, you're going to do good in life. If you're not going to go hard in life, you ain't gonna do good in life. You can't sit here and be like, yo, bro, um, my life sucks, bro. Don't fucking talk about it. Make a fucking change. Yeah. When you, once you make the change, your life is a lot better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knows I didn't graduate high school when I was supposed to graduate high school. I graduated high school through a college. But it didn't make me no worse or less or this or that. I'm doing perfectly fine. I'm licensed in New Jersey, New York, and I gotta renew my Florida license. After all said and done, yeah, I'm pop my nigga. <laughs> and and okay. I post I post on social media all the time and I let people know. I'm like, listen guys, like what you see from me is really what you get. I'm human, right? I'm not sitting here trying to play nobody else. So the only see not and, and this is the thing, right? Because it's like, you know, what you like how you say, what you see is what you get. And even when I go to your social media and you'll be like, yo, this gives me a chance to show what I've been doing the whole time, right? Yeah. See, but the also the the other thing with the whole thing with social media, and this is my love hate relationship with Okay, people, talk to me. Because of the simple fact it does give people this thing where they're constantly comparing themselves. Yeah. Right? And that's the problem. That it, it, if you go on somebody's social media page, right? And they're following three thousand people, and only two thousand, and, and only have five hundred people following them. Right. What does that tell you about that person? I'm not knocking the person that that needs to have a television show every day on their social media. 
I'm not knocking that person that needs to always consistently look what somebody's doing. I don't really care about that. I'm only putting out what I'm doing day in, day out. Not for the social media, right? I'm doing it because my clients created the real Get Fresh. I didn't create this page. My clients created it. Yo, Popeye, people need to see, because this is a new day and age, people need to see what the fuck you're doing. It's a new form of advertising. It's a new form of advertising. Yo, we love your shop. We love the business you do. We love the, the insight of your clothing company. We love everything that you do, traveling and online. We would like to see it more often. I said, well, make me a page. I'll fucking post on it. Fuck it. But see, but that's and what I'm saying. Long story short, my, one of my best friends, one of my best friends made my website. I didn't even want to have a website. But look, at this is what I'm trying to say. That's, that's also what I'm trying to say. It's like, you know, it's it, like, it's no different than dudes that want to rap and they compare themselves to the most successful person. Yeah. So now on a, you know, you lower that scale and it's like, yo, you're living your life and it's being that's amplified. That's it. And it's like somebody that, you know, they're not paying attention to what they need to be but doing, if you look, and then they compare. But let me tell you something, things. guys. If you look on my social media and you guys ask me a question, I go over 3,000 questions that you guys ask me, right? Thousands, wow, right? Wow, wow, wow. It was a lot of questions, and I, I probably answered probably over a few hundred. I answered all these questions, right? And I love answering the questions because this shit was fun. And I got to meet a lot of my new, new followers, a lot of people that are out there, you know what I'm saying? And I was out there showing love back. You guys know that I answer anything, man. I ain't one of those dudes that's gonna be there and stingy and nothing like that. I had barbers hitting me up saying, yo, I really appreciate you putting out that finance thing out there because some of the parents didn't teach them that. Or maybe the, 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 the owner of their shop isn't teaching them how to do their finance properly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm out here like I can help you out. My my buddy a, bu a buddy of mine opened up a uh, like a like one of those little trucks. And um, he's doing really well for himself. He raised his prices on it. And um, I told him congratulations. So uh I posted something this weekend about um, finance, like teaching people how to become um, like wealthy or building wealth. And um, a lot of people came back and told me, thank you for the knowledge. So I was like, oh, you're welcome, no problem. You know what I mean? Whatever I can do to help. Um, not, not everybody's parents are teaching them how to actually become um, uh, mortgage free or rent free or, um, financially stable. So whenever I'm able to help out, to help people like move forward in life, I'm gonna try my best. But I'm not gonna talk out of my ass, I'm only gonna talk out of experience. Mm -hmm. So if I'm speaking out of experience, for a lot of uh, young barbers out there, and a lot of people that are interested in art, that are interested in uh, being personal trainers, that are interested in health and fitness and wellness, I'm only gonna talk about the stuff that I know. I'm never gonna talk about something I don't know about. So, uh, now, a few of my buddies own these little grease truck things and like these as as acai bowl trucks and uh, ice cream trucks and, you know, I shout you out for, for, you know, starting a business, you know what I mean, and doing well with it. But don't, don't, don't sit there and, um, you know, try to ridicule and talk shit and compare yourself to somebody that's been in business for over 25 years or 15 years. Like they, there's there's a lot in knowledge in that many that much time a lot of it. yeah because it takes a, it takes a lot to sustain it. it it takes a lot to sustain it exactly like look, it's being charged though what are you doing it's being charged you're being charged stop acting up you are being charged you know what I mean oh no is it yeah, I even seen a thing, you know, I did an uh, interview with a female that she she worked for Johnson & Johnson and come to find out that, uh, and I saw the commercial, Johnson & Johnson has been around for, uh, since 1897. Yeah. And so that says a lot, that it's been around for over 100 years. You have to, you know, all the experience and all the stuff that goes into the place. So, like, I don't think that somebody that they're new in business, like a year or two, we're six months. It's unfair for you to try to compare or try to all of a sudden achieve the same level somebody's been yes. for 25 years. So I told them, I was like, oh, I, I wake up in the morning, I tell everybody, congratulations, I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. Like, he tells me that he sold out of all his little cocoa bowls, and I was like, congratulations, that's a blessing in itself. Like, to sell out in a day and to try to transform your body so that you're, you're influencing others, it's fucking great. I hate to be in my bag, I hate to sit there and talk to people and be like, I don't never want to compare myself to anybody. I never want to. I never want to sit there and tell anybody else that I'm better than them or they're better than me. I mean, we're just in this world for a short amount of time, so we all just need to be great and just be happy with the fuck we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really care about becoming rich. You know what I mean? I just want to be 
debt free and living a happy, sustainable life and being able to teach and mentor other people and push them to another level. Like it's, it's different. I'm Hispanic and black. So therefore, like there's not too many of us <laughs> that you can count on your fingertips that that's actually out there trying to push the limits. And then the ones that are are getting shut down by your own kind. So why 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 should your own kind be the ones that try to play you the fuck out? You know, I think it's actually a, a, a blessing to be able to be surrounded by other people that are doing it. Because yes. you know, especially because you know, being an entrepreneur or being a business owner is hard enough as it is. People just, think that being an entrepreneur is easy. This shit is the hardest thing in the world. Yeah. You don't know what dollars coming in yeah. next. Yeah. You don't know how to supply you don't know how to, you don't you don't know if you're gonna support your children. So so having that those conversations with other people doing it because you can't have the same conversation with, with somebody, somebody that has a regular nine to five. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't go from a nine to five to trying to start an entrepreneurship and think that life is going to be easy. It's never going to jump to the same way. Yeah. I was working at as an environmental chemist at STL Envirotech, Bristol Myers, and I was working at Chemtech before I, I took up cutting hair full time. Mm -hmm. I was a part time bar barber, making like eight hundred dollars a week, right, just cutting hair, and then working at the lab, making a whole shitload of money. But it was too many layoffs at the lab, and I decided to go full time with cutting hair because I was already licensed the whole nine. So. My whole thing was, I needed to make the same amount of money that I was making at my full-time job as an entrepreneur. Was it going to be hard? Hell yeah, it was hard. But I knew that if I fucking got licensed, I wasn't going to get in trouble, one. Two, if I, if I would be at the shop every day on time, I, I would have the, the early bird gets the worm, right? If I was good enough, clients would sit in my chair. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I, I've been home in this crap since, since 13 years old. 13 to 38. It's, it's a long time to figure out what you want to do in life. Yeah. That is a really long hey, time. So it was because some people are still trying, like if for you to do it from 13 to 38, and then some people at 38, 39, you know. They're, they're trying to do that now. They're, yeah, they're trying to figure out, I, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, even with my kids, I try to hone into it. Like, what are they doing now? Because they'll benefit from that. You know what I'm saying? And if you could tap into what what it is that you want to do early, you can start home. That's what I did. What I did was at the age of 13 years old, I knew what the fuck I wanted to do. That's dope. I'm going to do whatever the fuck it takes to get to what I got to go. And I knew that, like, when I, when I worked at Lucas Cafe in Metuchen, I talked to this old guy. He used to play chess. I talked to this old guy, and the old guy kept a real me. He said, yo, listen, if you're, if, if you're going to be 25 years old and you're going to purchase your house, right? By the time you're 55 years old, if you do a conventional loan for 30 years, you'll be rich by the time, time you're 55. I said, what do you mean by rich? He was like, rich in the sense that you've experienced paying a loan for 30 years, and you'll have the experience... You'll have the experience on how to become an adult. You're being an adult. I was like, wow, really? But it's only 25. It's pretty like, it's pretty young. I was like, what if I started it earlier? He said, if you started it earlier and you can get there earlier, you're going to be richer sooner right. because you will never have to pay for any rent. You will never have to pay for any mortgage and you'll be debt free. And I was like, wow, that's fucking insane. I'm like, so my thoughts was like, damn. So once I get rich out of the way, I can start working on my wealth. And he was like, yes, get 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 the, the the chance of having like being debt free and having your bills paid and then everything else is all profit so there's nothing wrong with having straight profits the problem is that other people out there when they start seeing you work really hard they're either going to compare and contrast and be like you're doing this to slow you the fuck up and talk shit about you make jokes about you to slow you the fuck up and then if you feed into it you're going to have conversations like we're having right now on his podcast that i brought it to the attention you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Like, if you're not where you want to be out in life, don't compare yourself to somebody but that's see, working hard. Okay, but look, if you're not where you want to be out of life, too, you have to take this as a thoroughbred. You have to put the blinders on both sides of your face. And, and just keep focused. it moving. Yes. And, 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 and put your head down and keep it going. And that's because you can't really look at it's like, it's, it. It is exactly this like kid me. It, this kid asked me, was like, so if you're rich, why don't you have a Ferrari? I'm like, what I, the fuck does that I have said, to do with it? I said, what the fuck is anything? having a Ferrari? Having, I, I don't want to be no, rich. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I, I, that shit should get shut down immediately. You know why? Because the, the wealthiest person, damn near the wealthiest person on the planet is Warren Buffett. $80 billion. And, and, and the dude was driving a Honda Accord. Uh, well, and and he, had a, he had a van. He had a that van too. that his daughter bought him for like $3,000 that he refused to get rid of. And his daughter, he lives in a $350,000 house. Simple as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, think about it. And there's dudes that want to live a certain life. Like, look at a $10 million, like, and this, a $10 million and that's dollar what I try to tell them. Like, I try to tell them this. I said, listen, you know how comfortable I am? 
I drive a Volkswagen GTI R, paid off, right? I said three years left on my loan to pay off my house, right? I have a business and I don't want anything more or any less. I'm happy with the situation I have. So then I broke them down about fuck. That's rich. Yeah. (laughs) I broke them down about fuck. I broke them down about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein wore the same clothes all the time. Why? So we didn't have to worry about what he had to fucking wear. You know what I'm saying? Look at uh, what the Steve Jobs, black turtleneck, blue jeans. What's that other guy's name? Gray t-shirt, blue jeans. Uni. <laughs> no, 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 Nigga, I don't give a fuck if you built the gym in the basement of your house because you want to save yourself some money you think you're going to work out. It doesn't show because mm. if you had a, a gym in your basement, you would have a 12-pack. You'd be, you be jacked as fuck. Right, right. You know what I mean? If you put in the time. If you put in the time, everything takes time. I mean, time. you know, there's dudes that don't, they're not building a gym. They're right on the, the outside. Right, right outside, yeah. doing pull-ups and getting yeah. a dips in. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's yeah. like, I don't like to talk about money because it doesn't make you, a, it doesn't make you better than somebody else if no. you have more money than another person does. It doesn't. It doesn't make it any sense. It just amplifies who you are. It just amplifies the fact that you got a lot of fucking bills. And you're going to have a lot more people that you don't know who the fuck they are coming at you for more money. Mm-hmm. Or people that don't want to support you because they think you already have it. money. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, 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 don't make yeah. no sense. Nigga, I'm broke as fuck, bro. I need yeah, everybody yeah. to come in and get a haircut, bro. I'm working by myself. What barber you know that does this? By themselves. Come in here. I'm hiring. I'm broke. I am not rich. I'm paying bills Why daily. Are you? That's counterproductive. You yeah. can't say you're broke and then want to. I don't want to work there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not broke. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I, I got listen you. to the concept. No, I, got, I, I know. I'm just yeah. saying. You know, somebody take it out of context. Now, don't take what I say out of context, please. Yeah, man. But after all said and done, it's kind of like, yo, you got these kids that are ignorant. They just want to argue to argue for no reason. And when you break them down with pure knowledge, you read the text messages. I showed you the text. The text was stupid. And then what did you say? Where is this coming from? Yeah. Where is where is he getting this from? Yeah. Having having cool items you, don't make you rich, yeah, man. You know, because you know, my thing is, if you got time, you know, if you got time to bad mouth what somebody else is doing, you're really not focused on what you. You're not focused doing. on what you're doing. Right. You know. Like I'm like, dude, it don't make no sense. You gotta love one another, man. You gotta like show love, man. There's a lot of. Um, you know, another way to be rich is, you know, rich in knowledge and learning and stuff like that. So for all that energy that was spent all that, all that negative to energy find, to, to find a, the perfect uh, pick or gift to make in fun of somebody. Yeah, you ain't got right? like, yeah. like, what you make, that energy. You what you make in fun of somebody for when, 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 when on the other hand, you don't want watching while the nigga working. Mm, like you yeah, watching, you yeah. watching while the nigga working. Yeah. Like, come on, you watching the nigga work. Yeah. But what the fuck are you doing? It's like another rapper coming to a show. They pay the tickets so they can move somebody else. Yeah, you you, you paid for the ticket. <laughs> right? Yeah, this dude, this dude, he buys garments from me all the time, and then he's like, "Yo, it's the best, the best stuff I ever purchased from me." And he only buys it on sale. I'm not gonna knock him for that though, but he gets it while it's on on the low. So, and he's he's like, "Yo, this is amazing," and then DMs me, talks to me, and shouts to me. To, and I'm like, "Yo, but why don't you 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 always gotta like question everything before it becomes." Like, I can give you a, 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 a handful of gold, my G. A handful of gold, you still gonna bitch about it, man. Like, why can't you just love the fact that, you know, somebody of your race, somebody of your culture is doing well? When, when somebody else, like... Crab in the barrel. Man. Yeah, crab in the barrel, man. The one that's failing is gonna try to pull everybody else down. Yeah. Don't be like that, man. Shit. Nigga got a beautiful family but, but, sitting there talking but, but, shit. But you know what? But you, yeah, I mean, you should take heed to that too. You should take note to that too because I have also too because it's like, look, I'm not gonna get religious, but in Proverbs, in Proverbs, it, yeah. it says do not uh, put your your pearls to a pig snout. I never do. So you know, it's you know, like why would you give your you know? Why so, am I giving this attention? Yeah. Well, it's because other people think the same way though. That's the fucked up part. You know, three people in a conversation, two people feel the same way. They gang up on you because of the fact that they feel that, oh, let's make jokes in the morning on this guy. Yeah. And, then, and then when you make jokes on them, both of them, they sour as fuck and they butt hurt. <laughs> they butt hurt. They're like, oh, man, Popeye, why you got to take it there for? Why you got to take it there for? Mm. And you're like, man, listen, don't make me don't make me pull your card, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't make no sense. The podcast today is pretty funny and fun. I ain't gonna lie, though. <laughs> lately, lately, the podcast has been kind of like, yeah. 
But now, today was fun. You know what I mean? Today, today was fun. Why are you fired up? I'm fired up because they, just the ignorance about, like, who supported me, what's not supported. Like, just like, it's crazy. I love everybody, man. Y'all all get love, man. I don't care what anybody says, bro. People... But, see, but that's, uh, again, this goes back to, you can see who's, who's are, is getting busy and doing things and who's not. Because most, of, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to dare to say just about anybody that's getting busy is not going to waste their time and e effort to like, oh, badmouth somebody. You're else. not supposed to badmouth anybody, because man. It's, it's because not it's even inspiration. Cool. Actually, it's inspiration. Like, when I see somebody else, that especially that I know. You know, I was watching Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix last night. And then, um, uh, who was it? Oh, God damn it. I think it was... Um, they're talking about ghetto boys coming out of Texas, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so when they said that when ghetto boys became successful, it's like other people in Texas, like, well, like Bun B was like, yo, we saw that and automatically like, yo, I know these guys. You know what I'm saying? I know these people. They're from my area and then inspired them to go in a gym. It's supposed to make you work harder. Right, it's kind of right. like if you see somebody at the bus in the ass. That man, you know. That you know. Yeah. It, even if you respect them or you don't respect them, you're like, oh, shit, I got to go a little harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. the fuck not? I mean, you go hard for people you don't know, but you see celebrities. It's and you crazy. Think like, you, you see celebrities going, fuck it. And then you go ape shit over a fucking celebrity. Yeah. But it'd be your best fucking friend that's starting something new, and you won't show no dick of, no, 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 no nothing of fucking support. Well, oh, oh, now, hold on now. See, I had to say something about that, too, because I see that a lot. People are like, oh, well, somebody local starts something, and you don't support it now. It, you know, I don't. I mean, you gotta be. You gotta I, be selective on what you support. Yes, yes, because yes. sometimes some some people be having some flim flam shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but okay. At, you know, yeah, you gonna keep them on it. Like clarify that. Clarify that. But at the end, after all said and done, it's kind of like, yo, I I've said this multiple times. Like, how you have a business for like fourteen years and like your your real homies, even though you don't fuck with them like that, in out the shop, they still don't visit the business or your family members. Don't don't even come by to say, oh my god, congratulations. You don't get no congratulations. So I never had a grand opening here for that main reason. Mm. I don't have a grand opening hand because, like, what's the point, man? I'm just gonna get to work. I just wanna work. I just wanna work. Let me let me work. Let me do what I'm doing, and let me continue to do what I'm doing. That's it. You know, I, you know? I, it's uh, what you say here. I had a friend named Teaser. He's a roster, and he used to always say, "Live life clean and let your works be seen." That's it. Live. And my my uncle used to say that same shit. Well, I don't wanna call it shit. The same thing. He's roster too. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? God rest his soul. Henry Castellano passed away. My uncle. You know what I mean? Like, after all said and done, yeah, man. That's it, you know? You just like, you, your work should shine. It's like it's like somebody telling you, yo, are you in a gym all the time? Yeah, hell yeah. You don't even have to talk you about got, it. You want, it's on your skin. Niggas see that you in there all your, the time. Your reputation precedes you. Your body shows it. Yeah, yeah. You can't have a gut and, and, and a fat ass and, and some droopy ass titties and motherfuckers be like, you in the gym all the time. No, you're not in the gym all the time. You lying. Or you're taking pictures at the gym all the time. Yes, <laughs> you're not. It, you, you don't your, know. your success has to show by the work you put in. And, and you, there isn't, I don't know anybody that has overnight success. It does never last. Overnight success does not last, bro. At all. At all. At all. You know what I mean? So I always congratulate when I hear somebody doing well. Because I'm like, all right, one year down. Keep Go, it going. Keep it going. <laughs> right? Like I never have one year anniversary, two year anniversary, three year anniversary. Yo, we've been here for 13, 14 years, never had an anniversary here, ever, or a grand opening. Why? Because this is a fucking way of life, and this is what the fuck we doing. Give a fuck about that. And you know, and, and the thing about it, too, is like... And customers are so fucking quick to switch, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> shit, you never even know. You're going to have a grand opening, get some nigga you ain't seen in like a thousand years. Yeah. Come come eat your food up, drink your drinks, and then dip and never come back. Come on, man. Private event. Appointment only. Holla at the kid. You know, do the math, man. It's crazy. People crazy, man. And you get people like they, you know, we'll have our conversations right now in the shop, and they'll take things out of content. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, yo, did you heard what this guy said? Like, come on, man. Don't make no sense. It's life, though, man. And it all starts with one person instigating this shit. And whenever somebody instigates, right, and you go after the person that instigates, not the person that's that got that that got them riled up. Right, 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 right. You you get the person that put it out there. They 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 crawl up in a motherfucking hole. They're like, I ain't start shit, bro. You yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. You're full of shit, bro. You be like, what? You you, you screenshot and show it to them. If you didn't say this, 
this one to happen. So you should keep your fucking mouth shut before we go after your ass and make you feel like a dickhead. But since this guy is brand new in business, let me go underneath his ass. He's going to have to learn a lot of shit because you're in business as an entrepreneur. You're supposed to be like me. You're supposed to shout out for shout out, man, because, you know, you need publicity. Your business is new, fam. Like, come on. Niggas be forgetting how big an outlet is, man. Shit. Because <laughs> you don't live in town. You think they ain't going to You know what I mean? Fuck out of here, man. This is crazy. It's crazy as fuck. That's that. What's rich? Rich is knowledge. Just, yeah. just be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. Just be knowledgeable. Uh, my bad, guys. We be, we, be, we be wilding and talking in here. Hi, how you doing? Uh, a man negativity is his own mental reflection yeah. of himself. Yes. Yeah. Salute to that. Salute to that, my boy Danny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, grabbing knowledge and showing love. Not everybody runs off negativity. Word up. Uh, no stay in your lane. Don't complain. That's <laughs> right. it. Each one, teach one. That is. That's what right. I'm talking about. Right. My boy, I talk about you all the time. Much respect. Mad love, my brother. Mad love. Mike, your barbers. Mad love to you, fam. Uh, lower the camera. Trent is blocking the view. Oh, my bad, my bad. What's up, Kim? It's on a stand right now. It's on a stand. They live beyond their means. Yo, Danny, you know me. You know me for a long time, bro. I've been doing the same thing for a real long time. Shit don't change over here. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Oh, house is about to be paid off. Your word up. I got three more years and we done with that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we got other investments as well, too. Dial was popping. Uh, we spoke work from paycheck to paycheck. Not easy at all. You already know the deal on that one. You got to bust your ass in order to survive in the United States of America. I mean, you could be poor in America and it will fucking suck. What up, Joe? How you doing, fam? See you when you get back. Uh, being broke in a different country is real deal, my nigga. You could be out there grabbing coconuts and peanuts, my nigga, and be living life real good. You know what I mean? In America, you out there being ridiculed and played the fuck out because niggas don't want to see you doing good. So that's just what it is. We on this. We on a podcast right now. Letting you guys know, we're on a podcast. Uh, I wish we could have one of you guys live. If one of you guys want to chime in live, oh, I, can do that, I can chime in live with one of you guys. Uh, they, you already know how it is. It's not easy to work and paycheck to paycheck. You're absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, Danny knows, man. Danny right there, duffel bag. Man, he know who I am, bro. He know me for a long time, bro. Your boy don't fuck around. I get busy over here, man. You know? But after all said and done, man, it, this topic was basically to touch base on my buddy Danny and my other buddy David. Uh, the two Hispanic males, good guys. See nothing against them. Really good guys. But, you know, some of the comments that they say really reflect on who they are as a person. We all trying to get, we all trying to be successful. But it's not all about money, man. It's not all about money, man. It really isn't. I think it's more about your time. Than it's about. Else. It's all about time. Time is way more important than your money. At the end, time at, is price. Time is price. You don't get the shit back. It's a poor man's mentality to to not identify your time as priceless. So there it is once again, man. Look at you know, I got some other interviews coming up, but y'all really got to let me know what's going on, man. I need some feedback, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I need real feedback. Call my phone, email me, all that good shit. I need to know what I'm doing is worth something to you because I don't need to do this thing. I do it because I love it. It's an outlet. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys got your IG and you post your photos. This is me. You know, it's like the radio thing. They gave me a radio station, fam. So if you want more of this, these conversations and real people having real conversations, yo, let me know. Man, let me know. I'm here. And if you want to be on the show, let me know that too. You could call me at 646-494-5331. Or just email uni at Radio Rec. Yeah, radio. W-R-E-C-K dot com. You know what I'm saying? And you know I'm always here with those voiceovers. You know what I'm saying? And them vocals. You know what I'm saying? Fly vocals. yeah, <laughs> And that's what I'm talking about. We talk about rich versus wealthy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always a big advocate for building wealth. You know what I'm saying? And you could be rich in a lot of different things. Rich is relative. You know what I'm saying? So we just going to keep this thing going on and on and on and on and on. I'm in that groove. The next episode is be my homeboy, DJ Rashawn. I get to watch his path for a very long time. 
him develop to be the person, the man, the DJ that he is today. So that's going to be the next one. But stay tuned because, you know, I'm always in a jack pop. I got to get that haircut. And the conversations, well, what can I say? Once again, it's Uni V Soul. This is life with Uni V Soul. For the nonsense To make it perfectly obvious I'm here to get my pockets I'm overload Heavyweight mode Don't care who's watching Spinning my gold Kicking my flow Get them speakers knocking Fight your way about that ghetto With limited options Hit your hands up for this dough Modern day robin Hoodie hood fella Got the groove back Rockin' LA driver In the front seat Blow through your city bopping Liddy with the buzz Homes when your album dropping I'll be sure to like everything you do But I won't be copping Arrested development, you speech back to me when you not popping Respect to the brothers like you who stayed on the lock-in Of the sideline and on the chime and observing Getting nervous, asking for a hand, yours in the dirt, you working Couple of snaps, few hashtags, I told the world we deserve it You keep on showing them how it's done, I'll be here front and lurking Sometimes you just gotta be like Oh shit Roll up with sun in the air, man. They gon' watch your moves regardless. Keep doing what you do.